Greetings, fellow learners. In this video, we are going to talk about the multi-layer perceptron and how it's actually different from the original perceptron architecture. So let's get to it. So in 1958, Frank Rosenblatt invented the perceptron. And the perceptron was a computation model of the biological process of pattern recognition. A model is a simplified representation of a complex process, in this case, pattern recognition. Computation model means that we can boil this down into a set of sequence of steps, calculations, or computations. Now, this here is going to be the computation model for the perceptron, the original perceptron, with its single learnable layer over here. Now, these are going to be binary threshold units where there's a single weight layer. We have input features and we have an output response. And the weights here are going to be learned by the perceptron convergence learning procedure, which we have done a lot more in a previous video. Now, while the perceptron can have multiple layers, so this is a multi-layer perceptron that was created by Frank Rosenblatt, it is really only this last layer over here that has learnable parameters. Now, how do we get the multi-layer perceptron? So an important note I wanna make in this video is that in 1958, Frank Rosenblatt introduced indeed a multi-layer perceptron, but only the last layer was learnable. However, that is not specifically the architecture that we refer to as the multi-layer perceptron today. And there are three main differences. And when I say multi-layer perceptron, I'm referring to this new architecture. And for the sake of separating the two, I'm going to refer to the previous multi-layer perceptron that was introduced by Frank Rosenblatt simply as the perceptron model or just the perceptron architecture, just to distinguish the two. With that cautionary PSA out of the way, Let's continue. So this here is the perceptron architecture, the original perceptron architecture. Now, in order to convert this to a multi-layer perceptron, as we call today, we will introduce hidden units. These hidden computation units are going to be non-linear functions. So we introduce hidden layers with non-linear neuron units. And then we replace the perceptron convergence learning procedure with the backpropagation of errors learning procedure. And this is now what we call the new multi-layer perceptron as we understand and call it today. So to convert the original perceptron to the multi-layer perceptron, we have made these three changes. We've added hidden units, these hidden units are nonlinear computation units. And we've also replaced the perceptron convergence learning procedure with the backpropagation of errors learning procedure. But why are we doing any of this at all? And in this video, we're going to take a look at each of these three points to understand exactly why and how they work. So first of all, let's talk about hidden units. So our perceptron architecture can actually work really well if we have very good handcrafted features. So for example, let's say that we are trying to build a pattern recognizer to recognize a two digit from a non two digit, where the input could be like some input 28 cross 28 image of a two. Now, what we can do is if we just have four features, we can handcraft these four features. Let's say one of them could be fraction of pixels that are on on the top half of the image, the fraction of pixels that are on on the bottom half of the image, that on the left half, and then on the right half. These could be plausible features to recognize a two from not a two. And assuming that these are good features, then the perceptron can actually work pretty well. But the problem here is that crafting good features is very much a trial and error mechanism, and it can be extremely tedious and difficult to get the right features. So how do we deal with this? Well, instead of handcrafting features with 
hidden layers added, we can now just pass in the raw input directly. So we don't need to handcraft our four features from this image. What we can do is just pass the image directly where we have this input layer of neurons, which is 784 neurons, one neuron that can represent a pixel. And then each of these hidden units could thus represent meaningful features to recognize a pattern. So for example, this neuron could recognize just the top hat of this too. This neuron could recognize some other edges over here. This neuron could recognize the shading and luminosity of these edges. And so each of these could just detect their own features. And hence, hidden units are known also as feature detectors. So why do we have hidden units? I hope this makes more sense. Next, these hidden units also need to be nonlinear hidden units. So why is this the case? I'm going to represent nonlinearity with this tilde symbol inside the unit to represent that it is not just like a binary threshold neuron. So in the event that it is just a linear neuron, all of these hidden units are hidden are linear neurons, when we pass in an input, the output is simply going to be a linear combination of the input if you just work out the math. And if the output is a linear combination of the input, what this means concretely is that if this is the input state space, in this case, it could just be if there's like four neurons, this could just be four axes or four dimensions in which in a space of which we have either twos and non twos. If we only have linear hidden units, then the decision boundary will also be linear in its inputs. So the equation of this decision boundary would just be ax1 plus bx2 plus cx3 plus dx4. Hence, it's going to be a hyperplane that's linear. And because it's a linear hyperplane, it may not classify the patterns correctly. And most pattern recognition problems that we would like to solve typically are a little bit more complex and have some non-linearity like this to it. And so in order to solve this issue, we can introduce nonlinear hidden units. With nonlinear hidden units, if you pass in certain inputs, you will get a nonlinear function of the inputs at this output neuron. And what that means is that the decision boundary is now also going to be nonlinear in the inputs, and it can thus better categorize and recognize patterns. So now let's move on to the third change that we made, which is we introduced a new learning algorithm. So we have these neurons here that are hidden neurons. These need to learn how to detect good features. But in order to learn how to detect good features, it means that these edge weights that are hidden over here need to also be learned to generate good features. Now, the perceptron convergence learning procedure, though, can't really be used here because in the organization of the perceptron that was introduced, we see that while the perceptron, the original perceptron, could have multiple layers, it's only this last weight layer that is actually learnable here. But the big question here is now, why can't we use perceptron convergence? Well, let's actually take a look at this with an example. This is a very simple example with one neuron per layer. It's a multi-layer architecture, and we want this neuron to learn how to function as an AND gate. So whenever the inputs x1 and x2 are on, y should be on. Otherwise, y is off. Now, let's say the weights are w. The outputs of each neuron is represented by o. And the weights are initialized to 0 0.5. And assuming these are just binary threshold units, they are just going to be 2. So we'll take that aside, and now let's try to use the perceptron convergence learning theorem to actually learn these weights. So let's say the input is x1 is 1 and x2 is 1. So if we pass 1 and 1 over here, the output you're going to get is 0 for assuming these are binary threshold units. And this is incorrect because the output should have been 1 for this. 
And according to the perception convergence learning procedure, we every time that there's an error that's made during training, we're going to have to update the weights. So let's update y, W31 over here. And this is how the weight update is going to look. So it's the learning rate eta times the error that was made times the input. So the weight is now going to be, if you kind of look at this and you know do the math, you'll see that it's going to be 0 0.5. And here we needed to calculate what O2 would be. This was the input to this neuron, but we can calculate that just by running a forward procedure over here. So weight W31 doesn't change, but at least we were able to compute the new weight. That's great. Now let's try to do the same for the weight W21. So let's go into W21, which is right over here. It's gonna be again, the learning rate times well, it's going to be this output that we get, which is O2. You know, that's the act, the desired output is going to be O2 minus the projected output that we get with the forward pass, which is O2 hat, times the input, which is O1. That's the input to this neuron. Now, you realize here, though, that we actually don't know what O2 is. Like, what is the desired value of O2? We really don't know any of that. And so, the perceptron convergence learning procedure cannot be used to train the hidden weights, but it can be used to probably train just the last layer. And so we need a new learning procedure that can learn all the weights in the network and not just the final layer. And we can do this with a new learning algorithm known as the backpropagation of errors. And I've discussed the backpropagation of errors learning procedure more in another video, so do check that out for some more details. Quiz time. Have you been paying attention? Let's quiz you to find out. Which of these four networks has the ability to learn a non-linear decision boundary? Note that multiple answers may be correct, and I will give you a few seconds to answer this question. The correct options are A and B. Did you get them right? Give your reasoning in the comments below and let's have a discussion. And if you do think I deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. Now that's gonna do it for quiz time and this video, but before we go, let's generate a summary. So we started this video with a definition of a perceptron. It's a computation model of the biological process of pattern recognition. Now, Frank Rosenblatt also introduced a multi-layer architecture to this perceptron, and so we call it the multi-layer perceptron, but only the last layer is going to be learned here. However, there have been additions of non-linear hidden units so as to learn more complex decision boundaries, as well as a new learning algorithm so that we can learn all weights and not just the weights that are associated with the final layer. And that's all that we have for today. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you do think I deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. And in order to continue your AI journey, do click on this video right over here. You won't regret it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.